Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about your home charging setup for your EV, so that conversation is coming up. So if you're new to the EV world, you're going to need what's called level 2 charging, and you're going to need a receptacle to be able to do that, or lack of better terms, you're going to need a plug or an outlet. So the common one that everyone uses for the most part, um, if you're going to put in a level 2 charger, is the NEMA 1450. So depending on your car, you might just be able to put in NEMA 1450, and your car will have a mobile adapter and a mobile charger with it where you can just plug the, you know, plug the adapter right into the NEMA 1450 and you can charge from there. But if your car doesn't, then what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to get also an EVSA, which is electric vehicle supply equipment, to be able to plug into the NEMA 1450 and then you can charge that way. So I wanted to make this video to bring awareness to the outlet I would highly, highly recommend you put in to avoid burning your house down. So most homes today actually have level 2 receptacles in the house, and most commonly these are going to be the dryer outlet, and say if you have a range or a stove that's electric, that's going to be a level 2 receptacle as well. And these appliances only require cheap outlets, and when I say cheap, I mean cheap as in monetary value, to be able to power the appliance. So a cheap outlet is like $10 and you get on Amazon or wherever, you know, hardware store is good for you. And these outlets work fine for these types of appliances because they don't pull energy for that long. And most of the time they don't max out the total amperage of the breaker. And so when you're, you know, those two combination of things is totally fine to have a, you know, a cheap monetary value outlet because it doesn't really stress the outlet out that much. But when we talk about EV charging, we're talking about fully loading this outlet for numerous hours at a time. So an example would be maybe you just came back from a long road trip and you're really low on energy. You're probably going to be charging the car overnight and it's going to be, you know, around eight hours or could be around eight hours of fully loading this outlet at 40 amps, which is really stressful on the outlet itself. But even if you're just charging, you know, overnight, you know, say you had a long day at work or something, you're still going to be charging the out, you're still going to be charging your car for maybe two, three hours at a time, which is still fully loading the outlet for a long period of time, much longer than you'd have your dryer on or you'd have your stove on if you're cooking. So instead of getting a delicate $10 dryer outlet, what I'd recommend is getting an industrial strength outlet to do your EV charging. These outlets are much, much beefier and can handle the abuse of constant charging and fully you know, loading the outlet over and over again. Industrial outlets will cost you in the neighborhood of $50, but for peace of mind and more importantly for safety, it's a no-brainer to get an uh, industrial outlet for your EV charging. So even if you're having a licensed electrician put in your NEMA 1450, ask them to put in an industrial outlet because it's just safer and it's going to you know, pay dividends in the long run because you don't want to be burning your house down. So I do stress that point very much because for whatever reason, electricians seem to want to just put in dryer outlets for EV charging even when you tell them that the outlet is going to be for EV charging. So maybe it's just because it's cheaper for them and it still lasts a little bit of time but it's not going to last as long and they make more margin on each install when they put in a cheaper you know, product as opposed to a more expensive product. And it's sort of disappointing to me because as an electrician, you should know that basically if you're going to be, you know, abusing this outlet with all this power continuously going, you know, night, day in, day out, that you should be putting in a beefier uh, outlet to basically cover yourself. But apparently they don't really care. And so basically, uh, basically my parents and I had two separate electricians put in NEMA 1450s for us, and both of them put the same dryer outlet for our EV charging. So probably in the next week here, I'm going to change out both of our outlets to the industrial style outlet. That way we don't burn our houses down. So if you're interested in this, the most popular industrial outlet is made by Hubble. And it costs about $150 now because every YouTuber mentions it and says that this is the one you should get for your EV charging. So because of the supply chain issues, it's really ballooned the price up. So what you should do is get an industrial outlet by Bryant, which is about $50. So much cheaper, but it's the same product because Bryant is a company that is owned by Hubble. So basically it's the same thing, but you're getting a cheaper price for it. So if you're interested in either, they are both linked in the description, so you can take a look at them and buy them if you want. So people on the other side will tell you, oh, I've had this dryer outlet for a couple years and it's been working fine. And I, I don't doubt that. I'm sure that's true. But having a dryer outlet 
you know, taking all that power over and over again is going to be a ticking time bomb. So if you do a Google search on melting 1450s, you're going to find unlimited threads of people showing pictures of their dryer outlet 1450 that melted. And again, it's because they can't handle this constant power over and over again. So you can tell the difference between the industrial outlet and the dryer outlet because the industrial outlet is way beefier in the back. And even the way the terminals are set up to tighten the, the wires inside the terminal, it's a much more secure way to do it without stripping screws as you would see on the dryer outlet. Dryer outlets are also not made to be plugged and unplugged constantly. And so basically when you have a dryer outlet, your dryer is going to sit there for 10 years or 15 years or whatever. So it's made to be plugged in maybe a couple of times over the life of the outlet before it kind of gets worn out and the prongs get loose. And that's how fires and arcing can start. And of course with the industrial outlet, it can be unplugged and plugged, but I would recommend not doing that if you can help it. Um, but it is made to be able to handle that type of thing if you need to unplug it for whatever reason. So as I mentioned with the dryer outlet, if you are unplugging and plugging it all the time, it'll loosen the prongs inside of the outlet. And basically what happens in that case is that the you know connection between the prongs inside the outlet and your actual connector uh, gets loose. And when that happens, that's what causes, that's what can cause arcing inside of the outlet. And arcing basically leads to fires or at least at the very least melting of the outlet. And so basically what happens is when those prongs get loose, it means that the outlet can't really hold the charger plug tightly and you want a really secure tight connection because that's how the current goes through the charger securely basically. And so when it's all loose like that, that's basically how the arcing starts when the prongs can like move around inside of the outlet. Another telltale sign that your outlet is kind of dying is that when you're charging, say you've charged for an hour or maybe longer, uh, when you touch the actual outlet or the plug, if it's really warm to hot, that's a, that's a sign that it's not, the connection is not really that good and you could have arcing or melting of the outlet pretty soon. If your outlet has a good solid tight connection, the outlet should really just be warm to not even warm at all, maybe more like room temperature. Another sign, like in my case since I have a Tesla, is that the mobile charger is smart and so basically if it sees fluctuations in current, it'll actually automatically lower the amps on the charger going into your car. So if you keep seeing that over and over again, that's a sign that your outlet is probably not as tight as it should be and that, you know, arcing or things are happening inside the outlet that you don't want. So hopefully that information was helpful to you in making a good decision when you are setting up your home charging. So let me know if you have any comments and thanks for watching.